Hey, gang, and welcome to the Wednesday, March 10 edition of Money and Politics. And hopefully I'm going to be able to go through a number of things today and not take too much of your time. Uh, so good to join you again. And we're going to get to a number of things tonight. But first, yesterday, I started off by asking you to tell me where you were calling from. And I was it was just amazing to hear from all of you. Uh, last time I checked, we had over 600 comments and uh, from virtually every state in the nation. Some of you are living pretty close to where I am in central Illinois. Uh, but let me do, a, I produced a little video uh, here of some of the places around the world that are watching Money and Politics. And as you can see, Canada, England, Germany, Hong Kong, Singapore, Guatemala, Jordan, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, South Korea. It is just amazing to me. And it really underscores on one hand what humble is all about, but also just what a world we are today. We're so interconnected. And when we look here in the United States and in other places like Canada and other nations where we are accustomed to using credit cards and some of the modern conveniences of finance, we realize as we look around the world that there's still many places that do not have that convenience. And that's what Humble is all about. And I think it's going to be making a major impact over the next several years. We're going to be talking about another company or revisiting, I should say, another company tonight. But first, let's just take a look at where Humble stuck, 320. And what I would have you notice is that we're just kind of stuck in the doldrums here. Uh, let's go a little closer and we can see that, as I noted the other day, we are just, um, you know, on Friday, here we are at 324, and today we close at 320. So you're talking about a difference of about 14 cents over the better part of the last week. Now, one thing I want to say is uh, tomorrow, as a reminder, we also, uh, we haven't talked too much about forwardly yes, uh, recently, but uh, tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock Central Time, in the United States, we're going to be having the forwardly investor call. So I think that's one of the big things. That's what we'll be talking about tomorrow night uh, for sure. So if you want to tune in, tune in. I'll remind you what I did last time when we got the call uh, on Humble. I went through and pulled out some of the better bites and put that together and then kind of made my own commentary on that. So we'll be doing that as well with forwardly. I'm eagerly awaiting that, and I, uh, I trust you are as well. Now, another thing that we have talked about in the past, another company, I would say, is Nextech. I used to own Nextech, uh, but I don't right at the moment. In fact, I, I sold it at about $5.24. Nextech is right now at about $4.00. I don't know if it's being sharded. I don't know why it's uh, being held down, but uh, a friend of mine, Jane King, uh, one of my dear friends, and unfortunately she lives in New York, uh, which is not bad for her, but it means that she and I don't get together as much as I, I wish we could. Uh, but Jane covers Wall Street for different TV stations from around the country. And she recently also interviewed the CEO of Next Tech, uh, Evan Gappelberg, on his some of his technology. Now, this was a much longer interview, but I'm going to play about a two-minute part here because he's talking about both the technology and uh, showing off some of the incredible technology they have in the in the realm of augmented reality. And you know, here just like. Kathy Wood with ARC tries to look at some of the trends that are coming. Augmented reality is one. Artificial intelligence is certainly one. Evan Gappelberg and Nextech are working on both of those, or with both of those, I should say. And they also have a, a phone app. They have their technology would work on a laptop. I have not personally experienced it as yet, 
But I really see that this technology would be so, so useful in virtually every field where you're trying to train employees, educate people in schools, uh, just any number of things. It really seems to be endless. So I wanted you to hear what he had to say. Uh, so let's take a listen. This runs about two minutes. It is our business. Augmented reality um, is, is where we started. We have a full tech stack, um, be it web AR, which is augmented reality without an app. You don't need, uh, you don't need an app, which, which eliminates a lot of the friction points. Um, whether you want to use um, augmented reality for e-commerce, we have a solution for that. For education, we have a solution for that. For entertainment, today we just announced um, that we, we released our new uh, uh, 2.0 version of our Airshow app, which is uh, human holograms for the music industry, so you can have uh, a hologram of your favorite, um, your favorite musician or star or thought leader in your home with you um, as if they're they're there, but it's actually just a, a hologram. So um, yeah, we have a lot of tech. There's some really futuristic, fascinating stuff. And we introduced a little bit with the, the music app, but there's also, you have an AI chat that was launched and this is something kind of Zoom is just now getting going on or tell me about that. Yeah, we've integrated uh, chat with AI features, which means that uh, if you're chatting using our chat, um, we could turn you into a human hologram and move you out of the screen into the room uh, with the person you're chatting with. And and so, you know, there's video chat, there's, um, there's also, you know, just text chatting. It's got AI and AR. So within the chat, you can have an AR experience and then if you think about that chat functionality we could break it out of the platform and have it as a standalone product and sell it to other companies which is a whole nother revenue opportunity for next tech and here's where the uh next tech stock stopped today at four dollars and a penny uh a number of you over the period of time i've been talking with you have said you know, that's fine, uh, you, you tell us about some of the higher price things, but we wanna have some, what stocks can we buy that are under $20 or under $10? This is certainly one. And if you look at a six month chart, you can see some of the choppiness here. And sadly, it just keeps kind of going down. I mean, we see back in February, it was $5.32. As I say, I used to own it. I am surprised that this isn't already a $20 stock, but here's what I can tell you. Um, and we can see, by the way, before I leave here, we have about 366,000 shares traded on average. Is this gonna go down much from four? I don't think so. I think it could go down certainly further. Uh, it was $3 and what, 41 cents uh, just earlier this month. And let me look at uh, year to year to, let's go see if we can get a one year chart. So you can see it's not, it's been a little bit lower, but uh, what, $3 and 50 cents is the low here. So it doesn't have a lot more to go down from here. I would say this is a, a company that has in, incredible technology and I'm, like I said, surprised that it's not already higher. The, aside from the technology, uh, it in 2020 did $20 million in revenue. And Evan Gappelberg, who we heard talking, the CEO of Nextech, said this year in 2021, he expects to do $21 million. So that's three times the size. Let's not also forget he was operating, doing sales in a shutdown global economy. Now, some of his technology really helps in that environment, but I'm going to argue that as we open up around the world, this company is also going to expand. And I would say if you're looking for, it's, it's, this is, nothing's a sure thing. I started to say it's not a sure thing. It's not a sure thing, but if you're looking for 
a company that has some real promise and one that I think could bring up a lot, uh, a lot more upside potential, then I think this is one that you could, um, you could really see going for. Um, Gappelberg is, uh, you know, a pretty dynamic guy. They recently, not too long ago, hired someone from Microsoft. I do have another video earlier that you could you could find on uh, our website here. But uh, as we go forward, I would think that this is one that just needs to get some attention and that it's basically been kind of lost in the mix. And that's what uh, is probably one of their biggest problems, that it's just suffering from a lack of notoriety. But as I said, they have increased their sales um, threefold. And what does get people's attention is as the stock grows, their sales grow, their earnings grow, that's gonna move the stock price. So you might have to wait a while, but that I think is a good, a good one to uh, take a look at. Um, so that said, where are we? We got forwardly, as I said, coming up. By the way, I'm gonna to forget to say it again if I don't say it right now. Uh, Sunday here in the United States, we got daylight savings time coming in. So don't forget, you got to spring forward, move your clocks forward one hour, which means we're going to have a little more daylight and won't be getting dark as easy. Uh, so I wanted to say that yesterday and I forgot. But going back to uh, Humble, we got March 26 coming up for the ticker. We got tomorrow for Forwardly. And then on April, we got the first ever of their, um, their financials for the very first quarter. So folks, how many times have you invested in the stock? where they haven't even had their very first quarter of business under their belt as yet. Uh, that's what's happening right now. And that first quarter ends at the end of this month. So that's pretty much what I have for today. Again, I, um, I'm just tickled pink at the response that we have had from all around the world. And folks, it really does seem like we're all one big family. And you know, for all the times that we've had over the years, over the centuries, fighting back and forth in the international strife. And isn't it nice that we can kind of come together uh, and share our thoughts and share our hopes and, and, and uh, share this experience at least in one stock. And that's a, really a feeling of goodwill that comes through from all of your comments and I appreciate it. So as we close out, I'm gonna go back to where we're our community from around the world and all of you whether you're in Nebraska or Florida or New York or Hong Kong, Guatemala, Saudi Arabia, wherever, I thank you all for your comments. If there's other stocks you want me to take a look at, let me know that. I try to get to them, but uh, a lot of times, let me just say this and then I'll close out. When you say, would you let me know what you think about X, Y, and Z, tell me why you think it's a good stock. Uh, if you don't know anything about it that you can't share, then do a little research before you ask me to go in and delve into it. Tell me why you think your stock you're asking me to, to take a look at, why you think it's good. Is it good because of breakthrough technology? Is it good because the management team is exceptional, because they're about to win a court case, whatever? Um, you can let me know. Speaking of court cases, uh, HCMC. I have family members that own that, but I am not a fan. Some of you had asked me about that. Here's the problem. They could win a court case, but who knows when? And I can't judge the courts. I can look at earnings. I can look at earnings per share. Uh, I don't know how a judge is going to decide a court case. And even if HCMC were to win their court case, what happens if uh, you know the tobacco companies just turn around and uh, appeal that? So then you're gonna have your money tied up for who knows how long. In the meantime, we have all kinds of good things to be investing in. And uh, with that, I'll let you go. I always go a little longer than I anticipate. Thanks so much, everybody. Love hearing your comments and I greatly appreciate you watching. Take care, we'll see you tomorrow.